This is a summary created based on the notes that I have taken from Andrew Huberman's Huberman Lab podcast episode talking about the science behind muscle growth, strength, and recovery. So to actually get into the information, aim for about 5 to 15 sets per week for each muscle. The nervous system is what actually stimulates muscle growth and hypertrophy. So to actually grow your muscles, you have to signal to your brain that your muscles need to get stronger. And to actually do this, you have to lift heavy weights and train to or close to failure. This is because lifting heavy weights recruits more motor units, which are neurons that are between your muscles and nerves. And those motor units open the gate and potential for muscles to get stronger or larger. Training to or close to failure will make you start to feel this burning sensation, which you probably might be familiar with already. But that burn is actually a a hormone called lactate. And lactate actually buffers the burn and suppresses it, allowing you to continue working and perform more reps. So essentially, lactate allows you to work through the burn and train to failure, which then stimulates hypertrophy. Lactate can also act as an additional fuel source when oxygen has been expended. So when you've essentially run out of breath, lactate can kick in and allow you to continue working and performing reps. It's also important that when you start to feel the burn, so when lactate is starting to emerge, you want to focus on your breathing because breathing will allow the lactate to travel within your body. This is important because lactate also has various positive effects to the functionality of the nervous system and other organs like the heart, liver, and the brain. However, it is also important to note that this lactate process will only be available for about 10% of each singular exercise. This is because it only occurs at the failing point or again when you start to feel that burning sensation. So to generate hypertrophy, you have to feel that almost painful contraction of the muscle in which you are focusing on a mind-muscle connection and prioritizing isolation movements. So slow and controlled reps and as well as flexing between sets can also help with hypertrophy. And to generate strength and suppleness, you have to lift heavy weights to recruit more of those motor units, which again are just neurons between your muscle and nerves. Focusing on a mind-muscle connection isn't really beneficial because you should be performing faster reps compared to hypertrophic training, and you also want to focus on compound movements. And if your goal is explosiveness, you want to perform, obviously, really fast reps. And for nutrition, beet juice is really good for enhancing performance because of a process called vasodilation, which is increasing blood flow to the muscle, contributing to the pump, and similar to how creatine works. And speaking of creatine, creatine has many, 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 many benefits. Just to name a few, it has cognitive benefits, um, increased focus, increased power, strength, and endurance, reduced fatigue, and much more. About 5 grams of creatine is good for the average person. You also want to have 700 to 3,000 milligrams of leucine, which is an amino acid in certain proteins. And you want majority of your protein to come from whole foods. Having sufficient amounts of salt and electrolytes is essential for not only athletic performance, but for cognitive performance as well. Some other good micronutrients include omega-3, vitamin D, potassium, and magnesium. And for recovery, don't expose yourself to cold via ice bath, cold showers, etc. within 4 hours of working out, as this will actually interfere with muscle growth. Palmer cooling, which is exposing the palms to cool temperatures between sets, can actually speed up recovery for the next set. And that is all my notes, and I hope you found this somewhat helpful.